Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Christian Life Center. Amen. How many are excited to be in the house of God this Sunday morning? Amen. Did anybody walk in with the praise on their lips? Hallelujah. Ah, uh, no one forced me to come today. No one dragged me in here, but I came willing uh, because God has been good to me. Uh, I know that when I come in this place, this is a place uh, where God's spirit is going to dwell uh, and is going to move. And I don't know about you, uh, but this is a wicked world that we live in. Uh, and I need this this morning. Uh, I need to come in here and fellowship with my brethren uh, and feel the presence of God. I wonder if we could all stand this Sunday morning. I, I feel God has already been moving. This is June. It's a real, the, really the first service of the summer we would consider. And the devil has been trying to cast a lie on Christian Life Center that God doesn't move in the summertime. Amen. That, we're, that God's on vacation mode and we're just going to get through the summer and come around September we might have a move of God again but I'm coming against that lie this Sunday morning amen God can move in June just as he went just as much as January during landmark time I want us to have the greatest move of God let this be the greatest summer full of the greatest moves of God that we've ever had amen anybody believe that this morning Woo, hot. You could feel the fire of God in this place right now. And I know if you come with expectation, God is going to touch you this morning. Amen. So let's do that right now from the front to the back, from the balcony side to side. Let's lift every hand to heaven right now with expectation. And why don't we just say this, God, I expect you to move on me today. God, I expect to receive a word from you today. I expect to get lost in worship today. God, move on me like you want to move, God. Lord, I take you out of the box this morning, and I give you permission, Lord, do whatever you want to do in my life. God, I pray for this service. Let the fire of God fall. Let the fire of God fall on every person. Give us greater passion for the lost. Give us greater passion, Lord, to see your kingdom expanded this morning. Hallelujah. If you've got the Holy Ghost, why don't you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now? Uh, I know it's the beginning of service. Uh, I know it's just an opening prayer, uh, but I could feel Jesus moving down the aisles right now. Uh, I feel like he wants to do a special work. Uh, I feel like this summer is going to be a special summer for Christian Life Center. Uh, and I want to be positioned and ready to receive what God has for me. Amen, amen, amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, ask him, are you ready for a move of God? Amen. God bless the musicians as they come. You may be seated if you like. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. When we give him the praise this morning, hallelujah, Jesus, we you this morning, God. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Oh, 
worship you, Jesus. We praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We've come to lift you up, the King of kings, the King of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Yes, the world bow down and say you are God. Every man bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you, oh Jesus, King of glory, feel this place, just want to be with you, oh yes, just want to be with you, yes the world.
lift our hands and worship Jesus. Oh, King of glory, fill this place, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody reach out and touch the Lord this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you today, Jesus. King of healing. Oh, fill this place, God. King of my joy, of my peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy of all our praise, God. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, let's lift our hands and worship Him.
ein Holy God. Halleluja, Halleluja. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Does anybody love him this morning? 
Has he been good to anybody this morning? Hallelujah. They sang the song, let the incense rise day and night. The Bible says that our prayers are like a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes I know with myself, if I were to be honest, I come to praise and worship servicing what I can get out of it. But I need to be more focused and not the feeling that I get, but the feeling that he gets. Hallelujah. Is he pleased with my worship this morning? Is he pleased with my praise this morning? Does he look down at me and does he say that that is praise? That is a sweet smelling savor in my nostrils. One more time. Can we lift every hand to heaven and just give him the praise that he deserves? The praise that belongs to him. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it, Christian Life Center. Amen. I don't do God any favors by worshiping him. Amen. Uh, that my praise and my worship belongs to him. Praise God. And now we're going to go in and we're going to step onto the battlefield like we've done so many times. Our pastor gave us a commission a couple weeks ago that we need to pray for our community. Amen. We, we need to pray for the healing in our community. The devil is trying to divide us. He's trying to divide us on the basis of, of race and, and nationality and culture. Uh, but in the church, amen, we're going to be unified no matter what our background is, uh, no matter what the color of our skin is. Amen. Uh, we're united under one banner, uh, and that banner is Jesus Christ. Amen. We're fitly joined together uh, by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, I don't care where we differ in our background. Uh, if you've got the Holy Ghost living inside of you, uh, you are my brother. Uh, you are my sister. Uh, and we're going to fight for each other. Amen. I refuse against the narrative of the world. I push back against it. We will be united in Jesus' name. And we're going to pray that that spirit of healing and unity would fall on Stockton, that it would touch our law enforcement officers, that God would protect them as the ministers of God, that we would pray for our city officials and for our governor and for our, our nation's leaders, that God would give us righteous leaders in these last days. I still believe this prayer is effective. Amen. I still believe this prayer is effective. Let's go on the battlefield one more time. Can we do that? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, uh, stepping on the battlefield one more time. Uh, Lord, your word commands us to come boldly uh, before the throne of grace. Uh, so with that boldness, God, I'm asking you uh, to pour out your spirit uh, even right now this Sunday morning uh, on this congregation in a way uh, that it would overflow uh, to the streets of our city. Uh, God, that this congregation uh, would take it out to the highways uh, and to the hedges lord uh, to their places of businesses uh, god that the bosses would come next week uh, co-workers would come next week uh, family members would be here next week uh, god they need to feel a move of god like they never have before uh, god i pray for our community uh, that there would be healing uh, give us unity oh lord god uh, because we know with that unity uh, when we're in one mind in one accord uh, that is when the spirit uh, truly falls like a russian mighty wind oh lord uh, I I pray for our police officers, God, uh, that you would protect them, Lord. Uh, you would send your angels around them to protect them, God. Uh, Lord, I pray for our city officials, uh, for our mayor, Lord. Give them wisdom in these last days. Uh, we pray for our governor, Lord, and our nation's leaders, uh, our president and our vice president. Uh, God, that you would send them a preacher, uh, someone to preach them the gospel. Uh, Lord, that they would be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, that they would get a revelation of the mighty God in Christ. Uh, Lord, that they would live a life that's pleasing to your word. Uh, Lord, we're believing for revival in these last days. Uh, God, we're praying to the north uh, and to the south uh, and to the east and to the west. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, uh, we command you uh, to give up the souls uh, that have been stored up for Christian Life Center. Uh, we believe it, Lord. If you believe it, uh, would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. How many believe that we serve a God that can answer big prayers? Amen. 
Hallelujah. If Joshua can look at the sun and command it to stand still, I believe God could pour out revival on Stockton like we've never seen before. Amen. Amen. But with that same mindset, God, the Bible says that his eye is on the sparrow. Amen. His eye is on the smallest details. And if you came into this building, Jesus is here to meet your need today. Amen. How many could be honest and say, you know, I came in uh, with, a physical, with a physical need in my body. Uh, I walked in with pain in my body. Uh, I've got a disease that the doctor said uh, that there's no hope for. I'm telling you uh, that Jesus is in the building right now. Amen. I believe that Jesus is still doing miracles in 2021. Amen. I had a dear sister come up to me right before I came up to service uh, a couple weeks ago during this prayer. We prayed for a young lady, a girl that was blinded in one eye. Uh, and she went back to the doctor this past week. Uh, and the doctor was astounded uh, that she could see in both eyes. Amen. Uh, that wasn't done 2,000 years ago. Uh, that was done a couple weeks ago. Uh, God's still opening up blinded eyes. Amen. Uh, get, God is still healing cancer. Amen. Uh, God's still healing diabetes. Amen. Uh, God is still healing broken battered minds he's still setting people free from depression eating disorders anxiety he's still doing it today Woo! I feel that release of faith right now so if that's you would you throw both hands up to heaven right now throw them up to heaven and say Jesus I came in with the need if I could just touch the hem of your garment amen Christian Life Center, with all the faith you got, I want you to, to I want you to point your hands in the direction of the person with their hand raised, and we're going to see some miracles this morning. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we come before you right now, uh, speaking the word of faith over this congregation. Uh, God, that you would heal the, the broken bodies, Lord. Uh, I rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. Uh, I plead the blood uh, over skin cancer. Uh, I plead the blood over prostate cancer. Uh, I, I plead the blood uh, over colon cancer uh, and breast cancer today. Uh, God, do a miracle uh, amongst your people today uh, that Stockton would know uh, that Jesus is alive. Uh, and and he's working in Christian Life Center today. God, I pray for the broken marriages, God, that you would restore them. Those that are dealing with depression, Lord, that a spirit of peace and comfort would descend on them this morning, Lord. Lord, if we could just touch the hem of that garment this morning. Hallelujah. I believe God just did a work right now. Hallelujah. If you feel like God just touched your body, would you just wave your hand to the Lord right now? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just glad I serve a living God. Amen. There's, there are millions and billions of people uh, that pray to a dead God. Hallelujah. There's millions and billions of people uh, that pray to a God uh, that cannot hear them, uh, cannot see them. But when we come into this church, uh, Jesus is here uh, and he hears our prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We have just a couple quick announcements today. It's exciting that we have some announcements. Amen. I never thought I'd be so excited to hear some announcements. Amen. But God is doing stuff. We have a lot of things going on this summer. All the Acts 29 youth say amen. All the Acts 29 youth say amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Summer camp starts tomorrow. Amen. How many are excited about the youth camp this year? God's going to do something special. Brother Landon Gore is going to be speaking, so it's tomorrow for all the procrastinators out there. Amen. The assignment is due tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. There's going to be a sign-up sheet, a sign-up table out in the lobby. There will be a parents' meeting as well. I believe it will be in the Genesis room over here. Is that correct, Brother Josh? Genesis room or membership room? Choir loft, thank you, Pastor Chris. It's going to be in the choir loft back here. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. Get your kids to youth camp. The price is $245. Very, very low uh, compared to other camps. But I promise you, out of all the investments you can make, 
The best investment you can make into your child's spirituality. I'll tell you right now, I would not be in ministry right now if it wasn't for those youth camps. They changed my life. Some of the most intense spiritual moments I ever had with God was at an Acts 29 youth camp. So I promise you, you will not regret it. Even if it's a, a, a financial difficulty, God will bless you. Amen. All the Lifeline Young Adults said amen. amen. Praise God. We have our first annual Lifeline Prayer Retreat. Amen. We're really excited about that. God's going to do that. God's going to do some amazing things. We're feeling something that God's going to do something special. That's going to be the following week. It's just the weekend, Friday, Saturday. We're coming back Sunday. It's going to be 135. Please register in the lobby. I promise you, we will fill up. We don't have very many spaces left. So if you do want to go, please, please, please get your name in. Praise God. If you are interested in joining the music ministry, the music team has asked um, if you play an instrument or you sing or you just feel the call to the music ministry, there'll be a sign-up table out in the lobby. We need anointed musicians. Amen. Praise God. And finally, or two more announcements, uh, baby dedication. Amen. Praise God. We're having a baby dedication. It's been a while since we had a baby dedication. I feel like we're going to have some teenagers dedicated this year. Amen. It's been a hot minute since we had a baby dedication. Amen. They're like, that blanket don't fit him no more. He's going into high school. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's been a year and a half. So uh, get your child registered. I'm telling you, it's going to be a big baby dedication this year. A lot of COVID babies. Amen. Uh, register your baby. Uh, online, clministry.com slash baby dedication, or you can call the church office for more information. And all the ladies said, ladies advance. Amen. Amen. It's coming up quicker than you think. Amen. Praise God. I know the slide uh, will go up during the offering time for more information. I don't have it in front of me right now, but you do want to get registered. It's going to be a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost. There'll be a registration table out in the lobby. Praise God. Now it's time for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Amen. Praise God. Can we all stand today? We're going to continue with online giving, but the ushers will be placing uh, baskets here on the altar area. If you do want to march and you have a monetary gift, thank you so much for being faithful during these difficult times to your tithe and your offering. It maintains the possibility that we could reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray for this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to give. You have blessed us so very abundantly, Lord. I pray you would bless every giver today as they give. Those that give out of a need, Lord, I pray you would give them a double blessing today. That you would pour out on their lives, God. Take care of them as you promised in your word, Lord. And we will be faithful with our tithe and our, and our offerings, Lord, because we know that you are the Lord of our house, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can march if you like. And after you're done, why don't you turn to someone and give them a friendly wave. God bless you as you give.
Well, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is anyone glad to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of God, can we just stand to our feet? Let's just praise the Lord right now. Give him a hand praise. Give him an ovation. Do something to glorify his name. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Anyone feel the Holy Ghost in this place? Amen. It was like a quickening, amen, in this place, in the spirit. Like God shifted something suddenly. Hallelujah. I do believe the Lord is going to speak to us today. I was thinking about that last song that the praise team uh, sung uh, about loving God and adoring God, about him being breath, him being life. Amen. Him being the sunshine. Amen. It touched me in such a personal way. Hallelujah. And uh, truly, that's what God is, isn't he? Isn't he breath to our lungs? Hallelujah. You know, I, I almost drowned when I was in high school one time. And, uh, and uh, there is a, an acquaintance of mine that was holding me underwater and he thought he was playing around, but what he didn't know is that I was already out of breath when he started playing and holding me under the water. And I was, it felt like one inch from the surface. And I was at that point in time where I just needed breath in my lungs. And I took in a whole lot of water trying to reach that one breath of life. Isn't that how it feels to live in a world, a world without oxygen, without life? And for so long, we're just trying to take one breath. Is there anywhere that I can get life? Am I talking to anybody this morning? Is there anywhere that I can just breathe one time? Just one time, I need one breath, and then the Holy Ghost comes in, amen. And we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we breathe. And we breathe what feels to be for the very first time. Hallelujah. That's what God is. Come on, that's what God is. He's breath, and he is life. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles today to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I know we're all standing still. Let's stand for a little while longer here. Second Corinthians chapter 4. And I just want to preach a word that perhaps would increase our faith today. I do believe the Lord has something to say to his people. And even in my life, my own personal life today, I do believe God's going to speak a good word to our lives today. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6. And it says... For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Hallelujah. In the face of Christ Jesus. Wow. That is powerful. Verse 7. But we have this treasure. What treasure? The knowledge of the glory of God in our hearts. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. We are hard pressed on every side. Woo! Yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair. I feel them already. Persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down, hey, but not destroyed. But now listen, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. 
For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh, which is the earthen vessel. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written. Now listen, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. With the help of the Lord God, I want to preach a word on this concept. I believed and therefore I spoke. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Can we pray that God would just have his way today? Lord Father, we come before your presence, Lord Jesus. We lift up our hands to worship you, to honor you, to glorify you, God. It is your spirit, God, and your word that gives life, God. Not the word of man, God, but the divine word of God. Today, Lord Father, I just pray that you would release a word, God, into our spirits today, God. You would release that word, God, into this place, God. And I pray that you would enable our hearts and our minds, God, and our spirits to receive that living word, God. Come and dwell in us today, God, and move things around. Let there be a shaking in our spirits, God, and enable us, God, today. Enable us to believe, God, today. Enable us to believe in your word, God. Enable us to walk forward in your word, God. Enable us, God, to be vessels of glory, God. In this mortal flesh, God, vessels of glory. For we believe today and we will speak, God. We believe and we will speak your word. We believe it today in Jesus' name. We thank you for the Holy Ghost today. Can we just give a hand praise to the Lord and glorify him? You are worthy, God. You are worthy of all the praise. Yes, Jesus. You may take your seats today. The word of God is so rich. It's so good. It's so full of life. We start today here in verse 6 of chapter 4. And it says that God, the same God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. What is being recalled here actually is the book of Genesis in chapter 1. The Apostle Paul is recalling what God did from the very beginning when there was yet nothing in existence in the world to give off light. When light didn't even exist in reality, there was no shape or form to it. God saw the nothingness of the universe and he declared with his mouth, let there be light and from the very beginning light began to shine into the world light was brought into existence by the power of the word of God and it continues to this day that's why you can see me and that is why I can see you because the whole reality of this universe is upheld by the authority of the word of God to this day and that same God is what the Apostle Paul is talking about. That when he came into our lives, there was nothingness and there was darkness, darkness in the abyss that was called our soul. Light did not exist in me. It did not exist in the reality of who I was. Within me, there is no existence nor a possibility of light. But one day when the gospel of Jesus Christ was spoken to me God said let there be light hallelujah and that darkness that was within me was filled with the light but it was a specific kind of light it's not the kind of light that you can turn on with a light switch but it was the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the glory that shone from the face of Christ Jesus does anyone know what I'm talking about this morning amen 
that before we knew who God was, uh, there was darkness in my eyesight. There was darkness in my mind. Uh, as Pastor Sanders says, uh, a fragmented mind within my soul. But then God came along and he spoke something out of nothing where no man could give me joy. God came and he brought me joy where no individual could give me love. God came and he brought love where I had no happiness. God came and he spoke. He said, let there be light. And there was a light in my spirit. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to praise him. Hallelujah. That makes me want to glorify him because no one could do it, but God did it. Amen. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And the word of God continues on here in verse 7. It says that the Lord God has invested this knowledge of the glory of Jesus Christ in earthen vessels and that's a really important that's a very important concept there because the truth of the matter is is that even though I have been transformed by the glory of God and I've been changed I've been born again yet my body still continues to be an earthen vessel it continues to be a vessel of weakness a vessel of imperfection everything is not quite right in my life as of yet and though I am constantly striving to be transformed to be more like Jesus Christ in the way that I think in the way that I feel in the way that I live in the way that I dress in the way that I speak in the way that I walk I'm desiring to be more like Jesus Christ however the truth of the matter is is that you and not I are not there yet and we will never get there but we're moving forward we're taking step by step to get closer to being who like God and to be like who God is however that does not that does not discourage God it does God does not avoid revealing his power and his glory into our lives even though he very well knows you are imperfect and he very well knows that I am imperfect that sometimes I still don't think right and I don't have all my thoughts and my heart together sometimes my soul is shaken up by the things of this world and it, it gets confused and it gets perplexed uh, like the word of God says yet however God says look I'm still going to invest the glory of the gospel in you and I'm still investing within you my spirit it is the light that is shining within an imperfect vessel and this is the reason why that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us so that in the end when we are at the end of our lives we would not be able to say it was by my own strength and my own wisdom that I got this far we will all cast our crowns before the Lord and bow our knees and say if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side doesn't matter how good you are how good of a family you came from in the end uh, you will not be able to make it without Jesus Christ uh, and every knee will bow and tongue confess that he is Lord and only he is Lord that the glory may be of God and not of man I couldn't take the glory even if I tried to. Hallelujah. I failed one too many times. I'm imperfect one too many times. But God, who is full of mercy and grace, he just keeps filling me with his spirit. He keeps filling me with his joy. And I don't deserve that joy. I don't, de but he keeps doing it. And for that, I praise him. For that, I glorify his name. And he keeps investing his glory in these earthen vessels, which is us, which is our bodies, which is our imperfect selves. Therefore, in verse 8, he says, we are hard pressed on every side. Yet here is the glory. We are not crushed. We are perplexed, which means with our minds, we're confused about what direction our life is going. We can't appropriately plan because everything is in chaos and everything cannot be predicted. 
You can't predict the amount of money you're going to make, whether you're even going to have a job next month. Am I talking to anybody? And there's so much perplexity. I'm confused. I cannot see. I cannot know where am I going to be next year. Yet we are not in despair. In this is the glory of God. We're confused about what exactly is going on in our lives, yet we do not fall into this hopelessness. Why? Because we know and we trust that our God is able. He is able to make a way out of no way. And even though I'm confused and I don't know what's going on, God is not confused. And he knows, he knows exactly what he is doing. And he's already planned every step of the way. And so the glory of God is manifest in that we do not lose ourselves into hopelessness. We're also persecuted, but we're not forsaken. And you know, this word here, persecuted, when you look at it's, it's what it means in its Greek form, we see that it's not just a simple attacking or a simple persecution that we imagine in our minds, but it is what it means is a hunting. We are hunted. We are actively pursued to be destroyed. We are persecuted, but somehow, some way, it is obvious to see that we have not been abandoned. Woo! That's powerful. If there was ever a time that we knew what this felt like, it is now. The church has felt not what it's like to be criticized. It's beyond that. We have been pursued. We have been hunted. They have tried to shut us down down and they've tried to put locks on our doors and try to get us out of our buildings and from gathering together but somehow some way the church of the living God we are still here and we're still sitting right here in this place how did we make it how are you still here the devil is wondering that himself how is it that so many of you found your way back to the house of God it's because we were persecuted and hunted but we were not abandoned our God is faithful hey our God is faithful our God is true our God is right and he's our protector and it continues on. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Woo! What does that mean? That means that sometimes we get tripped up and we're struck down. And from the eyes of everyone else, the rationality, the reasoning of everyone else, they say, wow, the church, it's losing its fervor. The church, it's losing its influence. We're struck down. But somehow the church keeps getting back up. Wow. It's like, it's like an object or a thing that falls on the ground and you well expect it to dest be destroyed and broken into pieces. But somehow that object, by some miracle and something that no one can explain, it's still together and it's still holding up. It's still as strong as it's ever been. That is the church of the living God. And you know, and, and if there are anybody who did who could do perhaps a psychological evaluation of me and, and a study of you and your mind and, and, and made a list of what you can take and what you can't take and a list of all of the insufficiencies in your emotional stability and your psychological makeup. If somebody made a study of you and I, perhaps they would say, you know what, they're going to lose their mind by about this time, all right? They're about to lose their mind. They're about to lose everything. They got get this kind of sickness. They got this terminal disease. They got this emotional instability. They don't have a family to support them. They're, everyone's abandoning them by this time. They're going to be losing their mind but somehow Sunday after Sunday we come to the church of the living God amen and we come to an altar and God begins investing he continues investing his glorious spirit in this weakened body and he makes my mind right where it was not right and he regulates hey that's what they say amen a mind regulator hey. Woo. 
He's a mind regulator. He's a spirit regulator. He's an emotional regulator. Where I should have been gone long ago, I am still standing because the power of God. Woo! Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So the Apostle Paul is actually describing the earthen vessel in one descriptor, but then the glory of God in another, where he says we're perplexed, earthen vessel, but we're not in despair, the glory of God. We are struck down, earthen vessel, but we're not destroyed, the glory of God. Come on. We're persecuted and we're hunted, earthen vessel. But we are not abandoned. And so we become, uh, we become poster people. We become a message to the world that the glory of God is in this place. That the glory of God is in this people. That the glory of God is in our lives. That's what we're talking about here. And the word of God continues forward. It says, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. It's the same concept. This body is dying. This body is in corruption. But somehow, some way, at the end of our life, at the end of our living, whether it be of old age or it be sickness, we are those people who do not go away in despair. But even in our last moments, and our last breath, we are the people who lift our hands to heaven and we say, glory be to God. Glory be to God who has been on my side. We are those kind of people that even in the dying of our flesh, with our last breath, we say, praise be to his name. Hallelujah. I had a friend who was a, a, a chaplain in a hospital, and they said that there is a great distinction between an individual who dies and knows God, an individual and an individual who does not know God. The individuals who do not know God, oftentimes they pass away in great screams and lament, trying to hold on to the next breath, trying to hold on. They die bitter. Many of them die lonely, but the child of God, though they may not have anyone by their side, they're still, they're lifting up their hands to heaven and they're glorifying the Lord because we know that when we go on it life does not end here but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and so we have a divine hope Woo, yes my Lord with that kind of hope you can never discourage me because death is the best thing that someone can do. And even in death, I will glorify the name of the Lord. Wow. And it says here, So then, death is working in us, but life in you. What is this talking about? The Apostle Paul is talking about how, and in many places within Scripture, within the books in which he has wrote, written, he describes how, as apostles, they are persecuted so that the church would continue on. And it says that death is in my body and persecution works within the apostles so that the church of the living God could keep moving on and keep growing. And this is most likely what he's referring to here. He's saying that death this persecution, this hunting comes upon our lives, but it is for your sake such that even though we are persecuted and we are oppressed on every side as the people of God, somehow the people of God keep multiplying. They keep moving. They keep growing. And this is the very dynamic that was present within this ancient time. The Roman government and every gov government official, they would persecute persecute the church of the living God but somehow they would just keep growing and they would keep moving and they tried to destroy one Bible study here but it would keep multiplying in two or three other places. They would persecute the church there and they would leave from that city and plant two or three more churches in another city and as much as the Roman government tried they could not stop 
stop the movement of the church and the growth of the living God. Amen. The manifestation of the kingdom of God here on earth. And that is the same thing that is occurring today. That they may try to persecute us and spread us abroad. But the more you try to push us out of society, the more society is going to keep coming to the feet of Jesus. And they're going to know who God is. Hallelujah. And since we have the same spirit of faith in verse 13, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, a very important principle here when studying the word of God is that whenever you read in the New Testament, as it is written, it is our responsibility to go to where it was originally written, most likely in some Old Testament passage, because then we will gain an understanding of what that writer is attempting to communicate in that present in time. Present time. The Apostle Paul, he is a unique writer in that many times he doesn't even explain like we would explain in a sermon today. He doesn't explain exactly what he means. Why? I think perhaps it's because he assumes that whoever is studying the Word of God is going to go back to the original Scripture. And going to make, he's, that individual is going to make meaning of what he is attempting to say in that present point in time based on the Old Testament Scripture. So that's what we have to do. And this verse of Scripture is actually quoting Psalms chapter uh, psalms 116 verses 5 through 11 and it gives the whole meaning of what it's talking about there let's go to psalms 116 and let's get a deeper understanding of what the apostle paul is attempting to say here psalm 116 we'll start at Verse 5 says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Are you recognizing any similar themes already? That this scripture, this psalm itself is likely what was completely in the mind of Paul when he was writing 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He was remembering this psalm. Hallelujah. It says, I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Hallelujah. My eyes from tears and my feet from falling I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living I believed therefore I spoke what did he speak I'm greatly afflicted I said in my haste all men are liars all men are liars Woo! the psalmist was observing his life He was observing his past and he was seeing, God, you delivered me from my affliction. Where everyone else said, surely death would come upon him. He observes about his past that God intervenes and he saves him from what anybody else could say about his life. And so he recognizes a very truth in saying, I am afflicted. But then he says, I said in my haste, all men are liars. This is what the Apostle Paul is referring to. When he says, when he quotes this scripture and he says, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. He is recalling what Psalm 116 is saying in saying, I am afflicted. But I also said with my mouth, all men are liars. Woo! All men are liars. What does that mean? It means 
that whatever man can say about my current situation, though it be rational, though it be logical, though it be factual, it is not the truth. Hallelujah. Though whatever a man can say, look, you only have this amount in your bank account. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Oh, you, you only have this many months to live. That's a fact. <laughs> whatever a man can say about my life, though it be factual, that is a lie. That is a lie. And so the apostle Paul is saying, look, it is obvious to the eyes of man that we're being persecuted. But the truth is, is that we will not be abandoned. Though the eyes of man, though through the rationality of man, it is obvious to see that the church has been cast down and we've been locked out the truth is we will not be destroyed so whatever a man can say about you and me is a lie so let God be true and every man be a liar hallelujah let God be true and every man be a liar we have a lot of people trying to say what the church is and what the church is not going to be in this age. But can I tell you, I do not believe the word of man. I believe the word that God has given me. Woo! Hey, hey, hey. Because whatever you have to say, it may be factual. But I can tell you right now, it's not true. Because let God be true and every man be a liar. You're telling me I shouldn't be here. That's all right. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be standing here before you. I shouldn't be here where I am right now. I am not qualified to be here. I don't deserve to be here. But God said I am investing my power in an earthen vessel. I am giving my spirit to a weak person that my name may be glorified through them. That my glory would be manifest through them. See, God is trying to show his glory through so many people in this place. But we're too caught up in what everybody else is telling us about ourselves. What we can be, what we can't be, what we have the privilege of doing and what we don't have the privilege of doing. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care what anybody says about me, about my background. When we stepped into the kingdom of God, we stepped into his power. Am I talking to anybody this morning? God's trying to show his glory through you and even through the impossibilities of your life. Hey, 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 hey. I, and I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about because I've experienced it for myself. And right now, I'm a, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm a professor in a Bible college. I've got my master's degree. By the grace of God, I'm in the last year of my PhD. Right? <laughs> Glory to God. But can I tell you, my grade point average in high school was a 0 0.9. This guy didn't even graduate from high school. Half of the days of my school, I cut. I didn't even go to school. I already had everything planned because I knew they called exactly at 3.30 in my house. I would answer and I would hang up. Is anyone know what I'm talking about? So my parents... My dad would never know, right? I was stuck in the system of my own thought, in the patterns of my own thinking. Patterns that if anybody would have taken a statistic, am I talking to anybody, of who and what I should have become, hey, <laughs> you would not, hey, Koro Shaba, you would not have been able to see a young man on a pulpit preaching to a people. Hey, you would have not been able to see a master's degree. You would not been able to see a PhD. And can I tell you, 
I'm not trying to say that because I'm something now. I'm trying to tell you that because I'm still nothing. I still am not good enough. I still am not qualified. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough willpower. I can't do it on my own. But it is God who has invested glory. You see, that's who Pentecostals were in the very beginning. If you go to Azusa Street Revival, everyone would say of the Pentecostals, they're too dumb. They don't know how to outreach. They don't have the right education. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, he fills us with power in earthen vessels. Can I tell you what that means for you is it doesn't matter what kind of limitations the devil is trying to say about who you are and what you're able to do. If God wants to show his glory through you, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And it's our job not to look at what's factual, not to look at what are the facts. It is our job to believe. Believe. Believe what God can do through you. Believe that God will make a way out of no way. The truth is, I could have easily looked at my past life and say, you know what? My parents were divorced. You know, we were a typical Mexican family. I I lived in a home with 18 other people. That's right. My first years here in California, when I moved here to California, I was living out of a suitcase in a living room with my two other brothers. Hey, that's the truth. That was facts. And because of those facts, if somebody would have taken my life and said, I predict this person will be this and that, they could have never told. They could have never predicted it. Why? Because God does the unpredictable. Hey, and I know there are people here who know what I'm talking about because we got alcoholics here, ex-alcoholics. We got ex-drug addicts. Am I talking to anyone today? We're talking about people who are addicted, ways of thinking, ways of living. You should not be here, but you are. You're here, and you're glorifying God, and God is using you. Woo! In fact, in fact, I know some of you have spent time in the mental ward, but here you are with your right mind. You're right in your spirit. No man can explain it. No man can say, what happened to them? Listen, what program did you go through? What education program? Who helped you? Who helped you along the way? Somebody probably opened doors for you. You didn't do it on your own. Yeah. Hey, somebody did open doors for me. But it was no man. It was God who was making a way out of no way. Who was showing his glory through an earthly, weakened vessel. So what we need today in the people of God is the courage to say what the Apostle Paul said. I believed and therefore I spoke. Every man is a liar. Hey, Every man is a liar. Satan comes to me and says, you can't do that. Every man is a liar. The city comes. He says, hey, you can't preach there. Every man is a liar. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hey, hey, you you can't come. You can't gather together and praise God. Every man is a liar. Hey, I'm going to praise God. Hey, you can't get in a building. Okay, I'll get in a park. Every man is a liar. You can't pray in a building. I'll pray in a park. Every man is a liar. You can't have church in a building. I'll have church in the park. Every man is a liar. Your baptismal tank is not open. It's all right. I'll baptize them in the streets. Every man is a liar. But the glory of God, it's going to be manifest. Whether the world likes it or not, whether Satan likes it or not, I'm not asking permission. The Lord is my God. And let God be true in every man. Be a liar. Hey, hey, hey. Can I tell you? That this is taken even a step further here. Because even those things that we can say in faith is not exactly all that can be said. Let me explain what I mean. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above 
all that you even know how to ask for as a child of God. Woo, what does that mean? That means that even what you pray in faith is not everything that God will do and He intends to do. This is why the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Hey, Kodobo Sha. Because even when you are praying, believing in your mind and believing in your spirit, you still do not know how to pray as you ought. But the Spirit that knows all things, it prays through you. So we come to church every morning and we say, God, bring revival. And God says, you have no idea how much revival I'm going to bring. Hey, <laughs> you, we, we praise God and we say, God, you are good. And God says, you have no idea how good I really am. We say, God, you're powerful. And God says, you have no idea how powerful I really am. That's why I need you to praise me in tongues. That's why I need you to worship me in tongues. Because you don't know how to express with your own words, with your own mind, how good I really am. And how powerful I will show myself to be. And the miracles that will be poured out. You don't know how to pray those kinds of prayers. So you got to get in the Holy Ghost. Because let God be true and every man be a liar. Ooh, hallelujah. We go from faith to faith to faith. Because we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit is in us. It's moving through us. And we begin to pray things that we know are impacting the kingdom of God. We're praying in other tongues. Uh, and we're pointing at things we don't even know what we're pointing at. Uh, we're stomping around in the Holy Ghost. We don't even know what we're stomping on. But we're bringing down principalities. Uh, we're bringing bound, down dominion, uh, dominions in the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're praying in the Spirit. Uh, woo! But we need a people, we need a people now more than ever before who are willing to believe and to speak. People who are willing to say, I believed, therefore I spoke. I believed, therefore I spoke. I believed, therefore I prayed. I believed, therefore I declared. I believed, therefore I prayed in Jesus' name. Who is willing today to believe? I believe God wants to take us beyond our imaginations. He wants to take us past everything we could ask or think. But we have to believe and we have to speak it. We have to be able to say, God, I believe it. I hear your word and I believe it. I hear your word and I'm moving forward. I may be perplexed, but that's all right. Because I believe and I speak, God, you're going to make a way. You will bring revival. You will bring healing. You will bring deliverance. You will bring it to your people. And even now, I'm not preaching exactly what I'm supposed to be preaching because there's something going on in the spirit there's something that's supposed to be going on in the spiritual realm that is beyond what I can ever communicate it's beyond what I can ever say it's the divine word of God that's trying to convince somebody step forward in Jesus name don't listen to the naysayers don't listen to anybody who says you can't you can because you can do all things you can do all things you can do all things. Come on. You can do all things through Christ. You can do it. Does anyone believe it today? You can do all things through Jesus Christ. Let's stand to our feet today. Let's stand to our feet today. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Just pray. In this season that's coming, God needs the church to believe. God needs the church to believe more than ever before. God needs the church to speak. God needs the church to pray. God needs the church to be a vessel of glory. A weakened vessel full of the divine glory of God. 
Someone has to be willing today. Come on. Somebody has to be willing to believe in the word of God, to believe in what the spirit of God is telling you. Somebody be brave. Somebody be courageous enough to believe. Not to believe in the facts. Not to believe in the facts. But to believe in the truth of the word of God today. Come on, keep praying in the Holy Ghost. A breakthrough is going to come. God's going to begin praying things through you that you could not pray on your own. Somebody pray in the Spirit. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody declare it with boldness. Somebody declare it with confidence. God, this world has been trying to tell me that I can't. But I can in you. I can in your word. I can in your spirit. I'm going to make it in Jesus' name. The enemy has been trying to press you down. The enemy has been trying to destroy you. But you're going to make it in Jesus' name. Get courage in your spirit. I believe, therefore I spoke. I believe, therefore I prayed. I believed. Oh, God is calling you to be more than a conqueror today. The enemy has been trying to convince you you're a victim. You're a victor today. You're victorious today. You got the power of God on your side today. Come on, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. You may be pressed on all sides. You may be hunted down right now. But God is your victory. God is your strength. God is your preserver. Ah, somebody needs this right now. Somebody needs this. Somebody needs to believe that you're going to make it. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to make it. Somebody needs to hear you're going to make it through. And I'm here to tell you, you're going to make it through. Because you will not be destroyed. You will not be taken down. You're not going to be taken out. You're going to be lifted up. Hey, you're going to be lifted up today. You're going to be lifted up today. You're going to be lifted up in the Holy Ghost today. Oh, I rebuke every spirit of fear, God, in this place. I rebuke, God, every discouragement in this place. Every ear that's been listening to a word that is against your word, God. And I pray, God, that you would increase our believing today. Increase our faith to believe in you. Increase our faith to walk forward. Increase us, God. Not that we would receive the glory, but so that your name, your name would be glorified through our weakness. Let your name be glorified through our shortcoming. Let your name be glorified through these earthen vessels, God. Through these earthen vessels, God. Let your name be glorified today. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray. God's trying to do it in your life. God's trying to do it in you. God's trying to help you to believe and speak. God is trying to help you believe and speak. Speak it now. Speak it now. Declare it now. In the face of your enemy, declare it now. In the face of doubt, speak it now. Believe and speak the word of God. Believe and declare the word of God. In the face of the facts, in the face of the facts, somebody declare, somebody declare, somebody believe, somebody believe today. <laughs> 